Welcome to the Hockey Writers Blackhawks Banter, a weekly show with our top Chicago Blackhawks writing crew, bringing you the latest news, rumors, trades, player grades, game results, and much more. From training camp to the playoffs, from Chelsea Dagger to the Madhouse on Madison, our team covers everything that happens with the Hawks. So get comfortable, grab a beverage, it's time for some Blackhawks Banter. Blackhawks Banter. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 79 of Blackhawks Banter, presented by the Hockey Writers. It's the Curtis Gabriel episode. I don't know if Blackhawk fans really uh, are familiar with him, but he was in Rockford okay. this season. Oh, yeah, see? I know there's a lot of fans of him. He does a lot of good work off the ice and stuff. So, But it's the Curtis Gabriel episode, the only person to wear number 79 in Blackhawks history so far, so good for him. But uh, I'm your host for today, Brooke Laferno, joined by my colleague, Gail Kowchuk. And today's an exciting episode because it's our uh, Blackhawks slash Tampa Bay Lightning crossover episode. So for today, we have our uh, Lightning writer at here at the Hockey Writers, Jim Bay. Nice to see you, Jim. Thanks so much for being on the show today with us. Oh, thank you for having me on. Yes, uh, we actually have a lot of stuff to talk about since there's a lot of Hawks lightning connections and with the lightning being in the playoffs. So we have a lot to cover. We're really excited about it. Uh, but first, make sure to like, follow and subscribe to our YouTube page so you never miss an episode of Blackhawks Banter. Be sure to follow all three of us on Twitter. Our usernames are right here on the screen. And lastly, this episode is presented by uh, the Hockey Writer Sports Betting Guide, which is a brand new source for your daily sports betting odds, lines, props and futures, as well as some daily fantasy strategies and analysis. So make sure you follow THW Bets on Twitter and Facebook to get the latest on everything sports betting. I'm not into sports betting, but I know a lot of people are, so have fun with it, but we do promote um, responsible betting. So please be responsible. Uh, so we have a lot to talk about, so let's just get right into it. So first we have to talk about the playoffs. Obviously, me and Gail are living vicariously through you, Jim, since the Blackhawks are not in the playoffs, but Tampa yeah. Bay is. But uh, we have to talk about uh, the Lightning's playoff um, tenure so far. Uh, they're actually doing pretty good. They're going for a three-peat. Um, they beat the Maple Leafs in seven, um, and they're on the cusp of sweeping the Florida Panthers. I know by the time this episode releases, you guys will know the answer if they won or not. Uh, but right now, the, ep or the game's still an hour away. Um, they're doing really well. Vasilevsky has only allowed one goal since game seven against uh, Toronto. So I guess we want to ask you, Jim, what has stood out about the Lightning this season compared to their last two Stanley Cup runs? Well, their, their season was uh, uh, a little difficult. They they were not as sharp as they were. They, they only finished third, um, you know, in their division. Uh, yeah, yeah, only, but uh, and they, they struggled in a lot of areas. Uh, there was a lot of people that thought they played very complacent, that they just seem uninterested at times. Their power play struggled a great deal, which has been a strength for them the past couple of years. And then they got into the playoffs. And while they haven't played particularly great, they've been very methodical and workmanlike in, in how they've gone about their business. Um, and they've just totally frustrated two very good um, offensive teams in Toronto and Florida. And that's, you know, surprisingly why they're on the verge of uh, sweeping Florida, the President's Cup, you know, winning team out of the playoffs. Yeah, I totally agree. Gail, uh, what's kind of your analysis of the Lightning so far that you've seen? I'm really glad that you brought that up, Jim, because that was kind of my thought as well is, um, they've done this a couple of times already. So they, they kind of get it, you know, they've been there, they've done that. They only finished third. Right. But now they're like on the cusp of beating the two people, the two teams that, that played ahead of them. Um, it, it reminds me of the Blackhawks of old that won, you know, three cups in, in six years. Um, they knew when to push the right buttons. They knew when it was, Oh, you know, maybe this, maybe this year they kind of floated a little bit through the regular season, but now, now is when they know how to turn it on. And now is when um, I think that their experience is going to come through and they're going to be a really, really, really tough team to beat. Yeah. Agreed. It seems like I know everyone talks about playoff experience. and I think a lot of people kind of not off at the idea, like, okay, what's playoff experience got to do it. If you're good, you're good. But this, the lightning show that playoff experience really is everything. I mean, look at Florida, 
dominated the regular season, but then they struggle a little bit in the playoffs and they got a pretty young team, not a whole lot of winning experience there. So yeah, I definitely think I wasn't sure about the lightning going into the postseason, to be honest, only because they were, I figured they were tired and stuff, but now they're proven again that they're pretty dang hard to beat no matter who they're facing right now. So got to give it credit to them and their coaching staff for keeping them that way. So I guess, absolutely, we, yeah. Um, so I guess I wanted to ask who has been, in your opinion, the MVP of the Lightning playoff run so far? I am going to go with Corey Perry. Just be, yeah, I, I know it's I didn't want to go with the, the obvious answers. And, and again, you know, Kucherov has played great. So it's Vasilevsky. They're kind of doing what they did. You know, Perry's a guy that they brought in for some extra veteran leadership but he has he's had such great ice awareness such a presence he's as as Blackhawk fans well know from his time in Anaheim he's a pain in the neck um he d- definitely gets under the skin of opposing players and he's added that little extra element and he's scoring goals he's he's I think second in the playoffs behind Colton in in scoring and with Braden Point being um, absent, he stepped up on the power play on the bumper and have j- has just really, I think, added an extra dimension for them that is, you know, helping him get through. So he's my pick for the MVP right now. I like it. Gail? I think that's awesome that you said Corey Perry. I'll tell you, I've never been a fan of his, but uh, I've been a really impressed with what he's been doing. <laughs> he's never, he's never a fan of, you're never a fan of him until he's on your team. He's one of yeah. those type of players because he is such a agitator on the ice and, you know, to the op- opponent. So that's understandable. And I looked this up actually, before we got on the show, um, unless I looked it up wrong, I hit Corey Perry and uh, Ross Colton are both tied right now for the lead with five goals. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, so that's pretty awesome. My pick was, you know, probably the, the typical one. I'm looking at Kucherov here, you know, 11 assists, 15 points. And basically that's leading the team in both of those categories. So he's just been, been their yeah. playmaker all around the ice, basically all situations. And, uh, but you're right. That's what he's expected to do, but he's doing it. So. That was, that was my pick. How about you, Brooke? Yeah, I know that there's a lot of bad blood between Hawks and um, Corey Perry because of his time with the Ducks and how many times we faced him, how many times they faced each other. But I've actually never minded him. He's obviously very talented. I like watching him play personally. He's kind of proven that again. He's 37, but still right. making things happen. You know, he's just one of those just really talented players. But I will say I have been I think I said this before, Gail, that I am really impressed with Ross Colton. I don't disagree with Corey Perry. I would pick him too, to be honest with you, but I have been impressed with him. It's those players that you don't expect to score. Like you expect Kucherov and Braden Point and all those people, but you need those like depth players like Corey Perry and Ross Colton to score goals. So, and they're doing it. That's how you win. So, you know what? I'm impressed with that because I think Ross Colton kind of came out of nowhere. He kind of like came from college or whatever. I don't, did he come from college? Where did he come from? He came, well, he, he did. And he came, he spent, um, he just spent a little time out our way in Syracuse oh. and uh, played, you know, really well and kind of earned his way into the, um, you know, lightning lineup. And he does go a little bit under the radar. Um, mm-hmm. Again, when you have stamp coach and, you know, Kucherov and, and, you know, all of them, you know, he's on the, you know, second, third line a, a lot, but uh, again, yeah, he gets the job done too. He's, he's had a really, really good playoff series. Yes, totally agree. Gail, who's the MVP of the Blackhawks in the playoffs? In the playoffs? Like like now where they're not playing. I know. That's <laughs> wah, wah. Kane. That's where we're at. Kane. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be Patrick Kane. He's a star even in the offseason when he's not playing. Yes. Case dismissed. Okay. So next we gotta talk about um the Hagel blockbuster trade and the reason we really wanted you on here Jim was because Blackhawk fans are still pretty attached to Brandon Hagel even though he was here in Chicago for a short time he made a really big impression fans loved him I would have we would have loved obviously to have him for a really long time but things didn't turn out that way um so obviously fans for a refresher uh Brandon Hagel went to the Lightning in exchange for two first round picks Boris Kachuk and Taylor Radish um, and because, you know, like I said, he's such a fan favorite. I know fans want to know how he's been doing in Tampa, especially since we don't see Tampa a lot, completely different division. So I guess, Jim, how's Hagel fair? Not just the playoffs, but even just the regular season since joining 
the lightning. Well, in the regular season, it took him a little while to, to kind of find, you know, his groove with, you know, which line he was going to skate on when he came in, um, uh, the coaching staff felt he was trying too hard to, to fit in. I mean, it's going from, you know, a situation where you're a young kid and now you're going to a, you know, a team that's trying to three-peat the Stanley cup and he was pressing a lot and they told him to relax and, you know, play his game. Now his game is high energy, as you know, uh, and it took him a little while to find some combinations, but he found, you know, found a nice home on, you know, on the third line, he skated really well at the end of the year and he's had, um, you know, a pretty, let, let's take Sunday's unfortunate penalty away. Um, but, you know, he's had a really good play, just doing what Brandon Hagel does high energy, great for checking blocking shots. He's one of the guys that, had to go off the ice for a little bit after blocking shots and, you know, the ga- a couple of games ago. So, you know, he's doing Brandon Hagel things that you saw in Chicago. He's now doing them for uh, the lightning and being very productive. Took a little slow start, but he's doing, he's doing quite well, fitting in very nicely. That's good to hear. Gail, what do you miss about Hagel? We can write a book on this. I know. Basically, but you know what? It's basically the same thing that, that Jim just said he appreciates about him being uh, with the Lightning. His energy is jam, always giving 100%. Um, I remember Alex DeBrinkat at one point saying that Hagel embodies the identity of what they want the Blackhawks to become, what they want them to be. is hard to play against and high energy and uh, fast paced. Um, so those are some pretty bold words. And, and that's why it was so tough, I think, for Hagel um, to leave the Blackhawks because he kind of embodied what what, what they were going for. And then, yeah. you know, he got pulled away. So kudos to um, Hagel for basically bringing that to, to his new team. But, you know, w- what would you expect? Anything less? That's, that's the way he's wired and good for him. Yeah. I miss the effort too. Even when the Blackhawks were, I don't like, seem like they were taking the night off. He was the one person you could count at to at least show effort. So I miss that a lot, but you know what fans for you guys, it's good. We want Hagel to succeed. You know, that's what, that's what we're here for, but it's good to see him. You know, I always thought, I think there was this thing about, he played so many minutes with the Blackhawks on the top lines, um, even though he's probably not a top line player, but I think a lot of fans or maybe some people were questioning, would he be that productive with less ice time? Because in, in Chicago, we had a lot of ice time. Tampa, yeah. that's a different story. It's a different team filled with a lot of different stars that get a lot more ice time than he does, but obviously he's still making something happen. You know, he's drawing penalties. I've seen him, you know, a bit here in the playoffs. He's looked really good to me. He's looked like the regular Brandon Hagel. And that changed his game. Didn't change his game, which you don't need him to. He's a good depth player. He's right where he needs to be. He's in the correct role. So I'm actually happy to see that he actually fit in pretty well, even in the regular season. Just Mm -hmm. needed a bit of time, but he's doing well. So that's good to hear. So hopefully that continues for him. Uh, So that brings us to the next part of the trade. Uh, which comes down to Boris Kachuk and Taylor Radish. Um, so obviously, Jim, Blackhawk fans are still kind of getting used to him. Obviously, they've been in Chicago the same amount of time Hagel has for the Lightning. So, I mean, they've showed some flashes here and there, but obviously it's not a big enough sample size. So obviously they came from different system, but what do you think Hawks fans can expect from them, from Radish and Kachuk? Well, Radish is uh, he's got a really good shot. I, I wouldn't be surprised if he blossoms into a, a regular 15, 20 goal scorer. Um, and he has, you know, he has, I don't know if the, the, you know, Blackhawk fans are aware he played in juniors with Dylan Strom and um, DeBrincat, Alex DeBrincat. And I think it was Erie and they have a nice chemistry together. And my guess is that when this trade came about, I don't know if they asked him or not, or if they knew the chemistry or they said, Hey, what do you think of, you know, Tyler Radish, they probably would give them a very good review. They did um, very well together. Actually Radish and Kachuk did very well in Syracuse last year. Um, they had a nice chemistry going, so they might be able to, um, you know, carry that over into the future. That's going to be the thing, you know, the Blackhawks return, the pain of losing Hagel, might not happen for a season or two until you see what these guys, you know, can blossom into. Kachuk is a physical guy. Um, you know, you're talking about Corey Perry being an agitator. That's what Kachuk could bring. He's a big guy. He's definitely kind of one of your typical bottom six kind of guys. 
He'll do great on the penalty kill, um, long reach. He'll, he'll, you know, take away lanes, you know, passing lanes and shooting lanes and stuff. Um, but you know, he can score a little bit too. So they both bring kind of a different element to the Blackhawks, but you know, they should complement um, each other and, you know, other players down the road. Yeah. I see that. Gail, do you have anything to add to that from what you've seen from Kachuk and Radish this season? As hard as it was to see Hagel go, um, I was really impressed um, with the, with the return, to be honest with you, you know, seeing Radish and Kachuk, uh, pretty much kind of fit right in and see that they have potential. So basically you're getting two guys there plus two first round picks. Um, Davidson did the right thing. It was difficult decision and um, you had to kind of take the personal side out of it, but uh, I'm, I, I, I'm happy with the, with the return and hopefully it'll lead to some more success as we go along here. Yeah. You know what? It, it does. Hegel's a great player. You don't want to lose him, but it might be a trade that actually might work out well for both sides. And I think maybe both teams can admit that both teams got what they needed out of it, yeah. you know? So they're in different stages, but I, yeah, you're, I think you're right about Radish. He's got a shot. That top shelf shot is amazing. We've seen that on the power play. I hope that becomes more consistent going into next season, especially after training camp. And could you kind of start finding a little bit of a scoring edge? Might, yeah. yeah. Might not be a lot, not compared to Radish, but. He still uh, has shown that kind of skill too. So you're right. They're good complementary depth players. I obviously showed that on Tampa and they could provide that, especially more in a bigger role for the Hawks um, in the rebuild. So yeah, yeah, like I said, it's tough, but it ended up working out okay for both sides. I think now we'll just have to wait and see how the two first round picks, how the Blackhawks use them too, but not a bad return at all. Uh, so finally for our last segment, we have to talk about the other two uh, Blackhawk lightning connection so gail i'm actually going to turn this one over to you because you wanted to touch on a former hawk that maybe some fans have forgotten so i'm going to give it take it away yeah i wanted to ask about jan ruda because i was a little bit confused when i was uh, kind of looking this up i know game one uh of the maple leafs uh there was that huge fight uh and jan ruda left and then he didn't play the rest of the series he had got a big gash on his forehead but now he's played in all three games of this next series so uh, I couldn't really find anything. Was he injured? Um, and I think that they're even like at one point we're dressing seven defensemen when he's playing. I'm just wondering like kind of where he's fitting in on the team right now. Um, it, it's hard, you know, with the NHL is not really, you know, forthcoming with their injury status. Like, you know, let's say football is where, you know, they have to report every little hangnail. Um, it, it was likely that he was hurt. It also could have been a decision you know, they like to do 11 forward, seven defensemen, but he will go 12 and six, depending on the situation. My guess is because he was banged up a little bit. They, they kind of held him back. Um, but in, in the last, you know, couple of games, he's done really well. He had that, you know, he, he, he goes under the radar a lot. He had that huge save when that puck was rolling around in the crease yesterday. Um, and he came in and scooped that thing out of there that's the kind of stuff he brings. He had a really good regular season. He was uh plus 25. And I think that was first or a second or third best on the team. So yeah, I know that's a little bit of an overrated stat, but it, it just kind of shows that, you know, he, he's a guy who does the right thing. Um, he's a solid, dependable defenseman. And, you know, that's, you know, that's what he's going to bring to the table. And that's what he's done, especially uh, in, you know, the, the Panther series for the lightning. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, do you know, for Blackhawk fans, do you guys remember, uh, we got Slater Cuckoo in return for Jan Ruda and actually liked Cuckoo. There was, I'm not, this yeah. is not this route, but I'm laughing. And not about. just because of his name, because yeah. of his name, but not just because of his name. <laughs> yeah, I actually liked him. I thought he was a fine depth defenseman, but I understand obviously that was a completely lopsided move in hindsight. Good gracious. Uh, but we're happy to see Jan Ruda do well. We didn't know exactly what his ceiling would be with the Blackhawks sometimes he had good moments and bad ones but it seems like with Tampa um he's finally found a groove so it's been nice to see him I think a lot of fans kind of forget about him a lot in terms of former Hawks on right. the Lightning mm -hmm. uh so I guess uh the one I really wanted to talk about was Tyler Johnson um because I'm actually working on something on uh an article on him right now um I really like Tyler Johnson I know Gail does too we've talked about this on the show before but he's kind of, he had a kind of a unlucky season 
Uh, he's only played in 26 games. Hawks fans didn't really get to know him, you know, in the way that Tampa fans know him. He was obviously a big part of two Stanley Cup runs. I know he's who John Cooper said is one of the best um, forwards to ever put on the lightning sweater. So obviously there's something there. And unfortunately Hawks fans didn't get to see it. So I don't know if he'll be on the team next year, to be honest with you, um, depending on their salary cap thing. I think he yeah. deserves to stay, but you know, it's a cruel salary cap world in that way. But I guess I want to know some Hawks fans have given up on Tyler Johnson in a way, like they don't see him very much. They don't know him very well. And so I guess I want to ask you, what do you want Hawks fans or just fans in general to know about him as a player? Because he does fly under the radar. Yeah. I think when you brought up the thing about what Cooper said, he had that big video tribute when uh, the Hawks came down to Tampa and Cooper actually said, um, you know, he, he was welling up a little bit because his experience with Johnson, I believe it actually goes back to minors. I think he coached Johnson, um, in Norfolk when they won the Calder cup and then they came to Syracuse when, you know, Tampa switched over there. So they have, they have a long history together. And he said he would not have reached 700 wins without guys like Tyler Johnson. And they, he's been described as kind of the ultimate team player. And that's why he flies under the radar. You're not going to see, you know, he, he doesn't do anything flashy. He doesn't put himself out there. He doesn't draw, you know, unnecessary attention to himself. He's just a guy who's going to go into a team and do whatever. He would be great for the Blackhawks if they can keep him because of the salary cap. But as we know, the salary cap kind of dictates so much. But uh, I think he would be great on there. I mean, you know, with Taze and Kane, they have great veterans. But he would add another presence, um, you know, for a team that could, you know, desperately need some some glue to hold them together, together, um, together at times. Yeah, totally agree. I love what from the short sample size, I did love what he brought. And I loved the trade when it happened. I thought this is the type of guy, especially because in the beginning they were trying to win with Mark Andre Fleury and Seth Jones. So it was like yeah. adding Tyler Johnson. Then it was kind of like, okay, they're really going for it. But even in a rebuild sense, I like him a lot. He carries himself. Well, I think even Gail mentioned, she liked a lot of his quotes, even that he would say after um, games and stuff, he's very professional. Yeah. And I think, yeah, fans, I think need to give them a little more, time especially if he's here next year I think he'll start to grow on fans a lot for sure but Gail do you have anything to add I want to say off the top of my head it's a five million dollar cap hit for Tyler Johnson which is a lot yeah. but um you have to remember too that the the Hawks are rebuilding and so they're going to have some uh uh they're going to be able to pay some guys a little bit more money because they've got all these young guys that uh you know are signed at the lower cap hits so I would have to agree 100%. You know, you've got Taze, you've got Kane, but Tyler Johnson would just be another layer of leadership, another layer of veteran presence um, that I think would be really, really awesome. So I, I, I'm rooting for him. I hope that he's with the team next season. Yes. So, yeah, I think we're all in agreement about how he beneficial he can be. So thank you for, Jim, for kind of talking and touching on that. But I'm sure as a Bolts fan, he's missed in Tampa, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. They, 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 you know, you, you hate to lose just quality guys on, on your roster and, and he's definitely, you know, missed by all. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like he'd be valued anywhere. He'd went, yeah. like you said, he's kind of like a Hagel, like would be just be valued to any team that he goes to. Um, so I guess to end this segment, Gail, <laughs> you got, you know, where this is going already, but do you think that the lightning will ultimately three peak? Will they get the Stanley cup for the third time? in a row I don't really want to see it happen because you like to see uh different teams win um and I wouldn't count out the Hurricanes I think they'll be a really tough one to get past I mean we don't even know who, if they won their round yet but I think they will um but you know and then if they get past them it'd be really really tough uh to beat the Avalanche um I actually there's no secret that I picked them to win the cup this season but um, if they do, if the lightning do, I really took my hat to them because that would be quite the accomplishment three in a row. Okay. So Jim, since you're our guest, you get the final word on this. Tell us everything you think about this. Will the bolts get the three P <laughs> I hate to say this. I don't think so. Yeah. I, you know, besides winning this series, 
it, they still have, as you, you count, and you got to get those 16 wins. They're only halfway there. I still think they're a pretty tired team. Mm -hmm. um, this, the, the shot blocking in this series has taken its toll. Sweeping tonight would give them a rest, would be a big help, but there's going to be two huge hurdles in maybe Carolina, um, whether it's Colorado, Edmonton, Calgary, or that team in Missouri. Um, <laughs> yeah, we it, don't talk about them. No, 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 no. I understand that. Um, but I, I'd love to see it. it can they do it? Uh, sure. It, it would not surprise me. I'm just, you know, if I was a betting man, I would not I would not bet for it. I would bet against it. But wow. So this History's is not on their side. That's for sure. You know, yeah, like, yeah. yeah experience, yeah. experience will carry them a long way, but the physical toll of the playoffs, especially for a third straight time in, in the kind of the winky years that we've had with COVID um, it'll, I, I think if they get this one, it, it, it'll be monumental of, of what they did uh, with everything they've gone through. And um, but we'll see. Wow. So that's, that's very intriguing coming from a Bolts perspective. Um, so I'm going to guess no to it. It's not just because I have Carolina winning the cup in my bracket. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I do think though, I kind of agree with you though. There's something there. Um, like you said, the Pittsburgh Penguins had a tough time. They couldn't even three peat. The Hawks couldn't do it. It's very hard to win yeah. in this league. And like you said, they have a shot just as much as anyone in the playoffs right now they're playing really good hockey so you know you never know but like you said getting there might be a little tougher this time around even if they do sweep the Panthers like you said yeah. you still got maybe Carolina you still got maybe the Avalanche a couple really um tough opponents there but like Gail said can they yeah I think they can they have just yeah. as much a chance as anyone to do it but I will be surprised if they do to be honest with you but like you said they can do it for sure. They have the coaching and the team to do it. So that'll be interesting. That's will be, will be a good storyline to follow in the playoffs for yeah. sure. Uh, so that will end um, our segment here for our lightning uh, Blackhawks crossover episode. Thank you so much, Jim, for coming on and you, sharing all of this information for the playoffs and for Hawks fans. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, we'll look to have you back again. We loved Hope you had a blast here with us. Um, and we wish you very good luck uh, in the playoffs going forward here. I know that you still got an exciting team to watch. And before we close yeah. it out for the Hawks fans that are watching, Jim is actually from the yeah. Illinois area. Yep. So uh, we actually have some uh, Illinois pride. He's Yeah, he's wearing a Hawks jersey. Yeah, <laughs> we're wearing blue. We're representing too. So thank you so much, Jim. We had a blast. Um, and yeah, I hope you have fun uh, watching the game tonight. Uh, rooting for you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it was my pleasure. I love I love talking Chicago and the Blackhawks. And, uh, you know, the two of you are to blame for me having to go order a Luminati pizza yesterday, because when I started <laughs> thinking about all the Chicago stuff, um, I had the hankering. So um, it's in the mail and it'll be out this way on Wednesday. So oh, that's, I know. that's on you too. That that's on you too on that one for that pizza. <laughs> I will take it. I will take it that you once you try to lose, you never go back. Nope. I, I like them all. I like them all. I miss, I missed the, the real Chicago pizza. Um, so, you know, it, I'm looking forward to that. Yes. Yes, for sure. Next time we have you on, we'll be sure to have a full spread of Ooh, Chicago meals. Go. Yeah, we'll try that. So uh, thank you guys. And thank you to the Blackhawk fans that are watching. Of course, I'm Brooke Laferno joined by Gail Kowchuk and we'll see you in the next segment.